got a visual aid here. Thank you, Maxine and Harriet. I'm the uh, Suwannee Riverkeeper, and well, I want to thank all of you because this pipeline wasn't even going to go through Georgia on the original route, and it doesn't have to cross the Santa Fe River, although it does. It only crosses the Withlacoochee River here because it's going to Crystal River, but it cannot get to South Florida without crossing the Suwannee River. So I want to thank all of you. I was the first person ever to call for protest against this pipeline, and thank you very much for turning out. Now, I still hear people saying, why didn't people do anything about this years before? Okay, well, you heard Merrily say a little bit about that. I will say just a little bit more. I first heard about this thing back in May or June 2013. Like, what about the pipeline? What pipeline? And I had to do an open records request with the Lowndes County Commission in Georgia to find out an outfit called Spectra Energy was asking landowners for permission to serve that. This was before there were even Sable Trail. Letters even said, we expect to win the contract. We don't have it yet. And uh, we started doing protests in Valdosta, Georgia, every two weeks in front of the Lowndes County Commission. Albany, Georgia picked it up pretty quick. Our Santa Fe River was in there from the beginning. Georgia Sierra Club was in it. Alabama Sierra Club, at least for a while. And now Florida Sierra Club with Merrily being actually paid to do this stuff. Okay, so they had what they called uh, open houses which is where Sable Trail tried to get just landowners to show up. We didn't want anybody else, but many else showed up anyway. We went to those. We tried to find out what they were doing. Then FERC had what they called scoping meetings. How many of you went to a FERC scoping meeting? Okay, yes, I recognize some of you. Most of you didn't because you hadn't heard about it yet. But we were there. We and a whole bunch of landowners, it was overwhelming in every one of these meetings. We don't want your pipeline. And people told them lots of good reasons over and over, lots of different good reasons, agriculture, springs, rivers, wildlife, property rights. They didn't listen. It got to the point where in Lake City in October 2015, people were, at, well, in Moultrie, Georgia, just before that, they were saying, people were saying things like, it's a farce, it's a hoax, it's wrong. And John Peconum of FERC sat there and uh, they carefully transcribed it. And in Lake City, Georgia, in Lake City, Florida, there was a fellow who came down from the Marcellus Shale, an actual fracking driller, who came down to say that drilling in this fragile, cursed limestone like Swiss cheese that contains all our drinking water in the Floridan aquifer is insanity. And he ought to know what he's talking about. Did they listen? They did not. Now, I personally told FERC that the commissioners of FERC, if they approved this pipeline, would be seen by history like tobacco executives when they testified to Congress saying their product did no harm when they knew full well it caused cancer in children. History will judge FERC that harshly. And I thank you all for turning out to help stop this thing. Now, uh, oh yes, um, can we see the other visual aid, please? It saves me having to spell it. Okay, Swanee Riverkeeper is a staff position. I'm the staff for the organization is Walls Watershed Coalition. Walls has been around since June 2012. And what we do is we defend our rivers. We get people out on them, we help conserve them. In 2015, Walls filed to uh, protest the Florida Department of Environmental Protection trying to issue a permit for this pipeline. It was a four-month process. There was a three-day hearing in Jasper, Florida. I merely testified, as did some other people. Though they wouldn't let her be an expert witness. Nine years of doing this stuff, she wasn't an expert. We did have an expert practicing geologist who was an expert witness who explained to them that it was 
he used more reserved terms. Basically, it's insanity to be drilling in this limestone. They did not listen. The one witness for DP sat there and said under oath, because they're drilling from upland to upland under the outstanding Florida water of the Suwannee River, there is no possible impact to that river. Under oath. Now, never mind, in October a year later, I was flying over the Withlacoochee River in Georgia that flows into the Suwannee, near where I live, and I looked down and said, what is that yellow thing in the river? Turns out that yellow thing was a boom to try to collect the drilling mud, sable drill, blew out from their pilot hole under the river, they blew it up into the river. Exactly what we told them in that hearing in Jasper could happen, exactly what they said would never happen. It happened. I also saw from the air a sinkhole, which they denied was a sinkhole, and then the next day decided, oh, there's a sinkhole there. There's also been sinkholes, somebody correct me, how many at the Santa Fe River? At least two, right? At least. And, and then there's been at least two in public roads in Florida, and God knows how many other we haven't seen, which is why we're organizing something. This is Dylan's fault. He made this, he, he prodded me till this is going to happen. We're starting crowdfunding Monday to do flights for the entire length of the pipeline, all 600 plus miles. Awesome. Thank you. We have all the river keepers along the way, Indian River Keeper, St. John's River Keeper, Swanee River Keeper, Flint River Keeper, and I haven't heard from Chattahoochee yet, but I expect they'll come in. Cody Suggs, are you here? We hope you will help. I'll talk to you later. There you are. Okay, so uh, Cody Suggs been doing his own flights. Yay, Cody Suggs. Yeah. Yay. Last summer, I sort of backed away from, I was being incredibly active in this stuff. I backed away from some of what I was doing and focused on Swanee Riverkeeper and Walls because no single person can organize this, not even Dylan. This has to be many people, many groups all over Florida, Georgia, Alabama, and the country, and it's happening. So that's really good. Okay, now, all of you can go out and look for violations and report them. Merrily can show you how to do it, so please talk to Merrily. Please do that. That one guy at the Georgia Environmental Protection Division who came out to look at the stuff discovered at the Withlacoochee River, he handles 34... <laughs> He handles 34 counties. There's no way he can even find stuff. Florida DEP is just as bad. They've both been defunded so much they can hardly turn around. So it's up to us to go find the violations and report them and then insist that the agencies do something about them. Um, I want to talk about one thing that people still are uh, misunderstanding, which is not surprising a physical prop for this one. How many of you got a smartphone in your pocket? Okay, probably at least half of you. How many of you had one 10 years ago? Zero. That's my point. That's an example of something that happened very, very fast. There are other examples that you know. Mobile phones themselves happen very fast. Personal computers. Okay, many of you don't remember that far back, but yes. The Internet. Uh, I am from the Internet. I first used the predecessor of the Internet in 1974. I'm actually 29 years old, so you can figure out how that happened. Okay, and in 1992, I predicted the rise of the Internet, how big it would get in 10 years. I was right within a factor of two. I say this to say, I made a similar prediction in 2013 about solar power. All right. Same kind of thing. Anybody ever heard of Moore's Law? Uh -huh. yep. Okay, Moore's Law. It's very similar. Right. Looking at FERC's own figures for deployment of solar power in this country, same organization that permitted this boondoggle pipeline, FERC's own figures for solar power deployment, it's doubling every two years. That's 2, then 4, then 8, then 16, then 32, then 64. That is exponential growth, like compound interest. People are not used to that. And this is one of the few things for which it is actually happening. 
And what that means, projecting it forward, I'm almost done, is within 10 years from then, more U.S. electricity will come from solar power than anything else. That's by 2023. I was not the only one to make this prediction. The chair of FERC at the time, John Wellinghoff, made the same prediction. I found that out a few months later. They got him out of there pretty quick. He also said natural gas was a dead end. They had to get rid of that guy. So my point is, people think, well, when solar power is ready, solar power is already cheaper than any other energy source. The solar industry provides more jobs right now than coal, oil, and gas combined. And it's and Georgia is the fastest growing U.S. solar market. Solar power is here right now. There is no need for this pipeline. Florida should go to straight to solar power right now. Thank you. Woo!